Welcome. This is the full moon in Pisces, September 17, 2024, astrology update. My name is Georgius. I'm an astrologer, and this is my regular update for another full moon. So, first of all, before I even go into the astrology, I want to talk about what I feel, <laughs> which is kind of funny considering it's going to be a full moon in Pisces. What I feel is going on right now in the collective for everyone. What has been going on really in the past week since Mercury left retrograde around September 12th? What has been this shift? What has actually changed? Well, from what I've been observing, there's, this is a time for people to close a karmic cycle again. I mean, what's new? Why? Because many people have reached out telling me they are asking if they should break it up. Their partner is behaving strangely all of a sudden. There's some weird communication going on. There's people suddenly changing 180 degrees. And that's because it's not like anybody's changing. It's just that people are showing you who they are. And you find that all those traumas, all those triggers, all those entity attachments now come to the surface once more. Because this is just like uh, a time loop. Going back into April 2024, doing the solar eclipse, the Chiron eclipse, that was also a Mercury retrograde. Now we left the retrograde, the second one of this year, and we are left with pretty much the same issues. Still issues unresolved in relationships that are coming back around. What do people have been telling me that uh, their exes have been reaching out? All these toxic people suddenly wanting to connect. Suddenly somebody new coming into their life to provide another lesson. As if we didn't have enough of that. As if we didn't already finish that cycle. And now we are having the same problem again. To test us to see, are we really finished? Are you really done? And for some people, it's going to be about the career, you know, the starting a job finishing a job and that's because the astrology well before i go into the astrology well what i think what's happening here is that well if you finish something that's to do with relationships that's to do with people that's to do with objects in psychology well there's some 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 kind of, kind of kind of a change also in your bank account in your foundation in what makes you feel stable emotionally physically and the stability is a bit uh, threatened right now because where we are lacking that stability where we are lacking that foundation and what we have built isn't really built on anything doesn't really have a foundation to stand on, well, that's going to be destroyed. And we have to fortify, strengthen, and recreate something that can actually last. Something that's actually aligned with you. Because everything that's not aligned with you is supposed to crumble. So think of it like a collective tower moment. And that's going to affect your finances. It's going to affect your career. It's going to affect how people look at you, what they think about you. That's why uh, after Mercury turned direct, it was a little bit of a period of gossip. You know, in the last week, mostly what I've seen is people extracting louche from each other through communication. How can I feast on this person to get the energy through communication, through gossip, through triangulation, through flying monkeys, through involving people into some kind of a drama to gang up on somebody, to bring that person down, to 
cut them down to size. So I can see my ego, my image being elevated above them. So there's a lot of competition that's happened in the last week. People trying to get the upper hand, so to speak. And who has the upper hand now? Because if you've been following me for a while, I always talk about winners and losers. Yes, a funny concept I made up. For every full moon, there's going to be winners and losers. And you have to find out how do you step up from being a loser and get to the winner position. How do you get to the winner bracket? What does the winner bracket look like? And what does the loser bracket look like? And basically, if you've been following my full moon videos, you have noticed I always tell you straight up what it is. So you don't have to use your brain. So you don't have to think. So you can just come to me to give you the answers, right? That's what most people are looking for when they're watching tarot videos, when they're watching astrology updates. Tell me what's going on. I suppose that's what a news reporter is supposed to do. And I'm not even sure if I'm really comfortable with that position, but I will tell you. So, for this full moon in Pisces, let's get into the astrology. First of all, the full moon is going to be connection Saturn. And Saturn is about karma. Saturn is about responsibility, boundaries, limitations, delays, restrictions. Something like a duty that has to be accommodated. Something you have to do, but you don't want to do it. But you just have to do it, you know. Close that cycle, close that door. Boof. Fortify your fortress. You know what I like to say. An open mind is like a fortress with its gaze unbarred and unguarded. A dawn of war quote. Which means that when you let somebody in, you are interacting with somebody, you are agreeing to an energy exchange with that person, and if that person is spiritually dirty, if they're a manipulator, if they are mentally ill, if they have some trauma, some entity attachment, some darkness about them that makes them suck your energy, time to break free. Because that's what this full moon is about. In Pisces, our spiritual hygiene, our water, water everywhere. So if I reach out to your water, is my water going to get dirty? Saturn says, I don't think so. I think our water has been dirty long enough. <laughs> Smash that person out of your system. And eliminate what is not good for your mental health. And the thing is, with Pisces, things are a little bit up in the air. There's some unfinished business for some people where they haven't really been clear in a solid foundation in their intuition. That's the foundation I'm talking about. Are you capable of discerning, of judging, of scanning, of identifying the elephant in the room, the devil at your doorstep, Saturn? That is what we're dealing with, the devil. So imagine the devil in the tower applying to this particular full moon. Who is the devil in your life? Because if you don't know, or if you got it wrong and you're shadow projecting, meaning you are the devil, but you're accusing somebody else of being the devil, you're in the loser bracket and you're the one being eliminated. So enjoy it. But if you're in the winner bracket, like more, of course, I'm always in the winner bracket, then you will be the one to cut the cords, to eliminate the entanglement with those who haven't been doing the inner work. They're coming around to repeat the cycle with you for which they are unprepared to finish it. So finish it for them. Don't be the bigger person, be the, be yourself. Remove what is not yourself, what is not conducive to you. Because your mental health is going to become under attack, under assault, spiritual warfare. 
that's what this full moon is really in a nutshell. So you could have been dealing with recently in the past six days, because of course, there's always a week before the full moon where I say the energy starts to culminate and take flight. You could have been dealing with demonic entities, looking into demonic attachments, into demonic court entanglements where somebody is siphoning your energy. Or you have to give your energy away in order to receive, like a trauma bond, like a codependency. We are trying to reach out to something or someone hoping you're going to get something out of them, but <laughs> you're not. Why? Because somebody's manipulating, somebody's ghosting, somebody's repeating the communication problems that are now represented by the Saturn opposition Mercury transit. Because as Mercury is exalted in Virgo, we are very aware of the details that are in our way, that are delaying, restricting our communication, right? Virgo opposing Saturn. Saturn saying, you know what, I think there's some business that needs to be attended to here. Why? Because somebody's dodging a business, somebody starting a business, and now you need to do some work. There could be repairs in your home, in your environment, in your relationship, wherever this full moon occupies at 25 degrees of uh, Pisces, your natal chart, that house shows you where the repairs have to be made. So there could be some renovations for some people where they try to set up some kind of communication some kind of uh, a problem that needs to be resolved. But the problem has been there for a very long time. And what Pisces shows us is our ancestors, our karma, our unconscious psychological patterns that are working against us in our self-sabotage. And the sun illuminates when it's opposition the moon, our subconscious. And the sun says, which is the ego, you know what? I don't like what's going on with my subconscious. I don't like the attachments and the entanglements I got myself into that are now negatively affecting my mental health, Pisces. So the tendency will be to detach, to let go, because the water can be overwhelming. And this is really like, if I ever saw a depression full moon, this could be one for some people. For me, of course not, because I'm in the winner bracket. But if you have some kind of depression, then you may want to look at uh, whether or not you have somehow found yourself in the loser bracket and why. Okay, let's analyze this. But first of all, Saturn, conjunction the moon, <laughs> There's depression in a nutshell. In Pisces, there's like real depression in a nutshell because it's the water we cannot control. It's the unconscious. It deals with the past. It's now coming back to haunt us for choices that have already been made. It's already done. You can't change it. But how do you let go of it? How do you release? Well, most people, they see something that they regret, where they've given the power away to something, or they got attached to something that didn't work out for them, and now they feel guilty and ashamed of what they have done, of how they have allowed themselves to be entangled into something where they should have been doing the inner work to psychologically heal what is yet unhealed. And now, because they are unhealed and the, the, the trigger has been triggered, they will feel the depression of that full moon cycle, which is the beginning of the eclipse season. Eclipse means darkness. The season of darkness is upon us, the second one of this year, to finish the Libra, South Node, Aries, North Node cycle of relationships 
versus independence. How do you claim your sovereignty? How do you step into your power? How do you gain control to strengthen your ability to make decisions, to be decisive, to be in charge of the energy? Because somebody else is trying to control your energy, to siphon it, to suck it. And that's why in the recent month, this cycle that we're dealing with now, if we're stepping into this eclipse, <laughs> It's already been building. We've already been dealing with this for over a month. If you ask me, we've been dealing with this shit show since the Algol Mars Uranus connection, which was like two to three months ago. My goodness, how time passes so quickly. And now time is slowing down. Now the days are becoming heavier. Your energy is becoming more difficult to ground as you need to strengthen yourself, to align yourself with Saturn, to make those walls, to have those boundaries, to say no. Something you need to say no to. Maybe you need to say no to yourself. How your own subconscious has been playing tricks on you. There's also a lot of people going to be around having all kinds of projections. And you have to say, you know what? That's not my projection. I give the projection back to you. Or if you feel like you are claiming back your energy, you may feel like if you're in the winner bracket, like you're getting really, really grounded. But this will only be for a select few, of course, like myself. Because the thing is, Pisces connects to your feet. But the reason why is because there's a tendency to disconnect and leave your body. Something wants you to leave your body during this season. You're really dealing with spiritual warfare here. Like we, we've been through the ringer, if you ask me, since that alcohol eclipse bullshit transit since then like where it's been one shit show after another shit show and another shit show non-stop shit show transits and now there's no end in sight there's no reprieve there's no uh who's gonna rescue us this time so it's like an ascension is going on where we become faced with a choice. Do we detach? Do we become emotionally unavailable and we remove ourselves from reality? Or do we face reality and say, you know what, I'm going to feel all those feelings that I do not want to feel, that depression I do not want to have. Just that is the lesson of this, uh, I feel, this full moon eclipse. To, to go through a season where you're constantly having to transmute your energy. You have to master it. You have to be in control of it. You have to be in charge. You have to feel like whatever comes at you doesn't stand a fucking chance. But if you give it a chance... If you allow yourself to be distracted, to lose your focus on the goal, on the task, on the mission at hand, then before you know it, you will leave your body. You will not be present and you will not enjoy these days at all. But there is a way to enjoy these dark times <laughs> when you say, you know what, I'm going to be the rock, uh, the what, what we say in Germany, der Fels in der Brandung. I'm not going to react. Not going to allow my emotions to dictate my actions. We're done with that. We're making boundaries with the emotions that are not our own. The feelings, the thoughts that are reactive to what's happening around us is there is some chaos 
that Saturn wants you to take control of. How do you do that? And that is really up to you to find out really during this full moon. But it's going to require you some kind of restraint, some kind of discipline. You know, imagine not just the devil in tarot, but the king of cups in tarot. This is definitely a king of cups situation. The king of cups is somebody who's fully in control of their emotions, that no matter what happens, they're not going to let their emotions dictate the next action. But for the loser bracket, <laughs> which somebody that you're dealing with, somebody that you're cutting out, somebody that you're removing, that you're making boundaries with, they're going to be in the loser bracket. So they're going to be the king of cups in reverse. <laughs> who has no control of their emotions and who may try to manipulate you during this time. It's possible because people who are insecure, who feel helpless, powerless, who, who feel like they, they need to be in self-preservation mode, pulling back the energy like an avoidant attachment style, they will try to manipulate you, try to blame mind games on you, and they will stalk you. They will look up your online profile. They will check your messages. They, they will try to bait you, to, to get you to give your energy to them because they're starving for your attention. Because Pisces is water. Water is hydration. You know, just having a dream. And when you have the drink, whose cup are you drinking from? Because somebody's thirsty. When the full moon is Pisces, somebody's thirsty. And who's, who is he thirsty for? For your energy. So this is why it's also a time of cleansing, of releasing those entanglements where somebody is trying to take control of your resources, of your money, of your energy, of your... Eh like a critter, like a parasite. And you need to detox, you need to cleanse yourself. And this, of course, with, uh, with the trend is with Virgo season, sun opposition Saturn. My goodness, we are on a diet, aren't we? A spiritual diet. But who are we dieting from? Who are you consuming? So some of you will block somebody during this uh, beautiful transit, uh, others will finish a job, uh, close out that cycle, start a new job. Uh, whatever it is, it's going to be significant. Saturn, of course, rules the domain of discipline, delays, restrictions, jobs, career, reputation, boundaries, walls, groundedness, discipline. All the things that deal with uh, the corporate realm. The realm of logic, the realm of contraction. So the collective energies will be very contracted. But this time, there could be a lot of fear. And the moon is going to illuminate your fears. It's going to make you very aware of them. Where you could be afraid of yourself. Because Saturn is opposing the sun, of course, with his full moon. That's what the full moon is about. A sun opposition moon. Transit. So therefore, you know, with both luminaries aspecting Saturn, there's a lot of fear. It's like you have to watch every step you make. It could be your last. <laughs> because chaos is right around the door. The chaos of your mind, where you lose your footing and you leave your body because it's just not, not a safe space to be inside this vessel, when there's so much trying to suck you, to suck you. And we need to be done with that. We need to identify and eliminate, remove. We need to be quite ruthless during this full moon. Because eclipse season <laughs> is going to try to get under your skin. Saturn roots the skin. The moon is the subconscious. So... It's trying to get under your skin, obviously, because the start of a cycle, which is a 28 day cycle of the eclipse season. No, it's just not, it's not just 14 days, although, technically speaking, 
The intensity will be felt for 14 days after the full moon until the new moon, which will be in what sign? Libra. Libra. <laughs> Meaning there's going to be a new beginning in your relationships in two weeks after this eclipse transit full moon. So, if I had to guess what we're dealing with here, well, there's going to be a lot of commerce. A lot of people coming and going. You know, Venus is still in uh, Libra. And it makes some kind of a square with Jupiter. What was that transit? I have to look it up. Venus, 21 degrees, Libra. Yes, it makes a trine, actually, with Jupiter. Makes a square with Pluto, really? Hmm? Why didn't anybody tell me Venus was square Pluto? Nobody told me that Venus was square Pluto. You know, I'm just like everybody else, you know. Call me a little bit of... Uh, I'm a bit casual, you know. I, I also look up transits from people. I don't always look up the astrology, what's going on with transits, you know. I kind of got bored of it recently when there has been so many shit shows. I just got tired of it, you know. Every time I look at the fucking chart of a moment, it's another shit show transit. Like, give me a fucking break. So I stopped looking. And now I see that Venus is square Pluto. For this full moon. Wow. So somebody's trying to have power over someone. Somebody's trying to have their money from you, their energy from you, their feasting on you, and you you're like what do you even want? Like why are you here? Don't try to gain control over them. Just get rid of them. Stop wasting your time. Because I have a feeling that during this transit, a lot of people are going to try to waste your time. And it's going to really upset you. It's going to make you feel restricted. Like, why is this relationship encounters I'm having not working? What's wrong with me? Yes, what's wrong with you? Look at yourself. What is inside you that's people-pleasing? That's codependent. That's like, oh, yeah, uh, maybe I could get them to to see the error of their ways if I just waited out. You know what? I, I just saw a video just before I made this live where uh, Owen Cook, bless his soul, he makes such good videos. He said, in my entire life, I haven't had a single person that I was able to change. From all those people, whether I have had borderline personality, avoidant attachment style, uh, narcissism, psychopathy, no label, just, you know, shadows, just shit show. No matter what they had, the people that I was dealing with, and I've dealt with many people, not a single time was I able to turn them around. I had to let go every single one of them. So if you're trying to save or heal somebody, don't fall for it. It's never going to happen. And if it happens once, well, okay, one out of 99 times is, is still a pretty bad statistic. So maybe you should develop the mindset of saying no to the shit show and just retracting your energy. Take it back. Because... This is very important, you know. I, I'm really trying to emphasize this and overemphasize this. Why there is so much spiritual warfare going on right now. People are being sucked. There's luge extraction. There has been luge extraction for over a week now, from what I have seen online. And you just have to learn, you know, how do I defend myself? How do I protect my luge? from being extracted, maybe I should be doing some extracting of myself. 
And once you learn how to extract loot on your own, <laughs> good luck for those trying to play you. Because if you are a demon and you're playing an angel, <laughs> and that angel decides to become a demon, to play a demon, well, it's over from a demon because the angel knows how to play your game a lot better than you do. Because the angel doesn't require you, doesn't need anything from you, doesn't need your luge. Angel has plenty. So when the angel starts manipulating the manipulator, <laughs> guess who's going to be in the loser bracket? So, hmm. Astrology, what is going on? Lilith is at 8 degrees, uh, Libra. Uh, it has been conjunction, the south node. Interesting, this transit. This is very interesting transit, you know. The Lilith conjunction, south node. Letting go of the compulsion to detach, of the compulsion to leave our body, to leave the relationship of a compulsion to let go of our perfectionism, which is not perfectionism, it's just like, we want peace, you know, we want harmony, we want our relationships, our environment, our work, our lifestyle to be peaceful. And that, that, that mother effort of a little connection stuff not transit comes along to tell us, well, I'm gonna give you something that you have to detach from, but you shouldn't be detaching because it's a shadow dynamic. Okay, thank you. Thank you. What am I supposed to do here? Connect to the fucking root. You know, when when somebody or something is just messing you up emotionally and you feel like you have to retract and contract and pull back your energy and keep it secret. Like I said before, that's exactly what you should be doing at this time. But there will be one situation in your relationships, perhaps. Could also be somewhere else, like wherever Libra occupies your chat, for example. For me, Libra is in the fourth house. The fourth house is my home. So I had to make a lot of changes in my home because there was always something pissing me off about my home. And when I got so pissed that I felt the compulsion in my body, a biochemical reaction to detach from it. And when I detach from it, I become very ungrounded. It's how the devil tempts you. You know how, they call, how I call uh, Lilith <clears throat> the forbidden fruit? Well, the south node, connection Lilith, shows you you need to let go of the forbidden fruit. And the forbidden fruit is to ignore something. Is to put something aside and pretend it's not happening. To be like, yeah, I'm good. I'm independent. I don't need anything from you. I'm okay. But meanwhile, you're like, ah, you're like, ah, I need something from you. I need this to work out. That's Lilith. Lilith is uh, <laughs> the dark side of the moon, the mother. When the mother wants to attach to her whatever, wants to attach, or the baby wants to attach to the mother, and the mother is pulling away. And the mother is pulling away because she has problems, mental problems, emotional problems. And that's the self not function they left. And, and your job is to stop pulling away, come back, address the elephant in the room, face your fear. Unfortunately, you also have to let go of your fear here because Lilith means I'm in my hermit mode. I mean, it's Virgo season. Like At the same time, I'm really in my hermit mode. And on one hand, I need to be because that Saturn tells me if I come out and face the music, somebody's going to hold me accountable. Somebody's trying to drain my energy. Somebody's trying to use guilt or shame to control me or to gaslight me. So I don't want any of the drama. I'm pulling away. Bye. But at the same time, what place is it coming from? And is it just 
you taking control to preserve and protect, but at what point is it enough? At what point do you become rigid? And you're doing the same thing over and over and over again because there's a controller. There's some part of you that's so scared it needs to protect you, but it's not protecting you from a place of intuition and wisdom and guidance and divinity, but from fear, from paranoia, from I don't want to give away an inch. Because the, the moment I give away an inch, they're going to take a hand. The moment they, I allow them to take my hand, they take my arm, they take my body, they take everything from me. And I don't want that to happen. So that's interesting, yeah, the strength. Very interesting. In any case, we've had this, uh, also this other connection, you know, this Lilith theme is really prominent right now because we had Sun connection Medusa, that snake mother ever, asteroid. We had that conjunction Medusa, the sun in Virgo, you know, because Medusa is at 21 degrees. Three days ago on the 13th, it has been an exact conjunction. And Medusa is about our self-esteem. It's been threatened. Where we feel like we are frozen. We don't know what to do. It seems like we're in a double bind situation. No matter what we do, it's not working out. So maybe we should just become a rock, like falling into a coma, <laughs> like a shutdown response, like a freeze response. That's what I always say about Medusa. And we're feeling within our communication because this is all about communication. This full moon opposing Mercury, opposing the sun, opposing that Medusa that is just like... Give the shame back to whom it belongs. Who's really the problem? What's really blocking you is the fear that whatever you do is going to come back to you. And to protect yourself, you're going to send that negative energy back. You know, somebody's trying to give you negative energy. Somebody's trying to send his flying monkeys after you. To, to come in and insult you in your messenger, to send you like uh, something to throw you off, to provoke you, to trigger you, to find your weakness, to, to shame you. Oh, you're such a bad person. I'm a victim. I'm Saturn in Pisces. You have abused me. Meanwhile, they're the abuser. And you're like, am I really so bad? No, because the sun means the success is with Medusa. Medusa is a snake. Med Medusa is, uh, I pull out my, uh, my snake hair and I hiss. So you, your evil eye goes back to where it comes from. I'm giving you the evil eye now, motherfucker. And that's what Medusa wants to do to, to, to repel to back, 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 go to the shadows. You know what I mean? To, to the critters, to the, to the spiders, to the flies, to the snakes, to... But first, I need to become a snake. First, I need to be the beast. I need to be a demon to be the demon. I need to stop being the hunted and start becoming a hunter. So this trend that is going to allow you to really give the predator a taste of his own medicine. And whether it's in your job, making a boundary with another person, whether it's you backstabbing somebody who's already backstabbed you, <laughs> you're giving it back to them. And that's really all, the only thing you should concern yourself with. Because if you are not giving the poison to the poison maker, you're swallowing. You, you're, you're having a feast on the poison and you, you'll be the one who, to be, you know, what happened to Medusa. When somebody shows you a mirror, somebody's trying to mirror you. Somebody's trying to protect themselves by attacking you. And are you going to fall for it is the question.
So there's a lot of interesting trends going on here. Well, now that Mars is in Cancer also, it's a lot of passive aggressive energy afoot, yeah? What is water? <laughs> I'm a water dominant and I'm telling you this is some manipulator energy afoot. Moon, Saturn, Neptune, one, two, three, four, because the luminary counts twice, and five, Mars in Cancer. This is a water season, yeah? It's all about our emotions, our feelings, and our feelings are under attack. Our, our feelings are like uh, working against us. And we can feel like we, we, we're scared to defend ourselves. We're scared to fight back because we don't want the other person to retaliate. But it's Mars and Cancer. Oh, Mars and Cancer. I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to attack them. It's going to cause drama. It's, it, it's cowardice in a nutshell. So somebody's dodging. Somebody's hiding. And they're going to be in the loser bracket with the rest of them. So, and then Mars is square Neptune. <laughs> oh my God, these threads is... Oof. I don't want to look at them anymore. <laughs> I've been looking at these shit show trends for so long now. Is there something good happening here? Hmm. Interesting. It looks like the sun is trying. Pluto. That's nice. Because it means when, whenever you try to take the power back, it's likely going to work. It's not going to backfire. Just be intelligent. Be grounded. Be careful. Be calculated. Be strategic. And it's going to work out for you. What's also interesting is that Mercury has been conjunction Angel and conjunction Vesta the last two days. An angel is basically just you thinking about something that has to do with angels or talking about angels, which means talking about demons also, like that Mercury opposing Saturn is like. Somebody's trying to play the sweet innocent. Somebody's trying to pour honeycomb to, to manipulate you into your ears, you know, like what welcome or something. And then you have that Mercury connection Vesta, so somebody... Is, is typing messages in your WhatsApp and then deleting those messages. And then typing them again and then deleting them again. Just trying to figure out how to manipulate you. <laughs> oh, yes. And somebody is just like making you wonder, how the fuck, what are you communicating? Let me, let me learn more about what it is that you're doing here to figure out how to navigate this because... I need to learn more about this. What's going on here? Well, there is a psychological dynamic, you know, Mercury opposing Saturn is like some shadow work is coming to your door and you're just trying to figure out what the fuck is this person doing? What is wrong with them? Like, what is this mental illness I'm dealing with? And then you have the sun in Virgo try making a grand trine with Uranus and Pluto. Yeah, because Pluto 29 degrees Still in, Cap in Capricorn now, as it moved back, and Uranus at Algol. This is a grand shrine. And what does this grand shrine mean? Well, it's like, uh, you know what? I'm going to do whatever the fuck I want. I'm going to go ballistic now. I'm going to take the power back. Now I am free. And there's nothing you can do about it. Because this is very rebellious energy. It's just like, watch me. W watch me walk away from this. Watch me ghost the ghoster. <laughs> so I don't know if, if this resonates for anybody, but... Damn, this is really some interesting energy. But that's really uh, the astrology in a nutshell. We have a lot of retrograde planets, you know, Pluto, Uranus, Neptune, Saturn. I mean, the whole squad of outer planets is in a freaking retrograde. It's like, have to go inwards, have to go inwards, have to go inwards until 
smash my head against the wall because this shadow work shit show doesn't never seems to end really. This year is uh, it's not an easy one. I'm gonna be honest with you. No sugar coating on this channel, you know. It's just like 2024 is just a complete shit show from start to finish. Doesn't seem like there's any end to it. I mean, you're like, like okay, man, okay. What to do? What to do? I, I don't have any suggestions for you. If you come here for advice, uh, go go get a reading, man. <laughs> Pay for it, bitch. But really, uh, collectively speaking to the collective now, um, you just have to be honest with yourself. Just have to take accountability for how your actions are creating the situations in which you find yourself in again and again. Why is this happening to you? You need to be the cause, not the effect. And that's something Owen Cook basically taught me. You need to be in charge. You need to figure out what the fuck is going on. What's running this game? Because it's just like, if you needed April eclipse for longer than a month, well, you have a whole year of it. And this is really an opportunity. Don't be like uh, negative and say, oh, I just want this to be over. Yeah, I, I do want it to be over as well. But it's just a year to learn, to protect yourself, to solidify your position, to learn boundaries, to, to say no, to cut out all the all the karma that this is like... <sighs> I'm over it, bitch. I'm over it, you know. Be but if, if if this year didn't happen, if we didn't have these transits, I mean, what would you be doing? Like watching Netflix? Like, is that your life? Watching Netflix, uh, go to the forest, uh, sit by the lake? Like, what do people do these days? At least these transits aren't boring. Because if there's one drama after another... You're not failing. There's nothing wrong with you. It's the shit show transits. There's going to be drama, no matter what you do. You can be Mrs. or Mr. Perfect. You can do everything right. You will not avoid any of this. It's going to come to you. It's going to find you. It's going to hit you. What are you going to do when it does? Because... If you try to live, create a life of peace, prosperity, stability, do so, but be advised that the stability is not going to be felt at the deepest levels until the traumas are reserved, that are standing in the way. And unfortunately for you, the collective has given you a whole lot. And one year of working through these problems, that's, that's like going to a monastery. It's like going to the hospital. That's like the 12th house experience. Finally, I'm taking some time aside to work through all these problems. And once you're out of the hospital, you're going to be a lot, a whole lot healthier than before. And that's your goal. Your goal is not to be problem free, your goal is to keep going. Focus on the light. The light is at the end of the tunnel. The light is also in the present. But you're being distracted. You're being under spiritual warfare. You're you're being triggered. You're you're being assaulted. You're being harassed by these trends, basically in a nutshell. And you can't not be harassed. Like, you can be a hermit. You can isolate yourself. You, you, you can go into a freaking stasis chamber for a year if you want to. But you don't want to escape this. It's good for you. You know what they say? It's good for you. It's a detox. 
It's a Herx cyber reaction. <laughs> you know what they say. In any case, uh, this is really my little summary for this full moon in a nutshell. If it resonates, please leave a like and subscribe. It helps my channel. If you like this video and you're interested in my services, you can find them in the description down below. You can find them on my photo album page. If you're ever interested in a personal reading, reach out through Messenger one-on-one -on -one and you can check out my services, what I have to offer. I do personal chat readings. I do also trauma consultations, personal work, transits, relationship chat readings, anything really. So check that out if you're interested. With that being said, thanks so much for watching and see you in the next video.